What's up, my name is Technumber here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to yet another Cyberpunk 2077 optimization video. In this video, I've got something a bit more exciting than in my previous videos. We're not necessarily going to jump into code and do a whole bunch of work. What we're going to do is allow the game to use more of our existing RAM and VRAM. For a lot of users, this will result in a huge performance increase other than some more RAM usage and some more VRAM usage if you have that available. If you're running a super, super low end computer, then this probably isn't going to help you at all. And if you're running a computer that's more than powerful enough to run this game at the best performance possible, you also won't gain much from this. So first, I'll go through exactly what you can do to test it for yourself, which I highly, highly recommend because you will get different results to me and I'm quite sure yours will probably be better than mine. Then at the end of this video, I'll run through results for not only my desktop PC with a Ryzen 3900X and a 1080 Ti, but also my laptop with an Intel i7 7700HQ and a GTX 1050 in it. So how exactly do we allow the game to use more RAM and VRAM? Well, it's super simple. Simply navigate across to where the game is installed. If you have it installed via Steam, open up Steam, locate Cyberpunk on the list, right click, hover over manage, and then click browse local files. Inside of here, simply open up the engine folder, config, simply locate memory pool budget start CSV, right click, copy, and then right click paste to make a backup copy of this. As we'll be messing with the config, we will want to keep a backup for personal reference later. If this does nothing positive for you, you can reset it back to the default settings simply by deleting the file we're modifying and renaming this one back to the original as such. So simply open up memory pool budgets with either Notepad or another text editor. I'll be using Notepad++ and inside of here we see a whole bunch of options. While you can mess around with the rest of these pools and tell them exactly how much of memory or VRAM they are able to take, the two that we're going to be focusing on is pool CPU and pool GPU. This is the total amount of RAM or VRAM that your game is allowed access to. So before we start changing these away from 1.5 gigabytes RAM max and 3 gigabytes VRAM max, let's find out exactly how much we can give Cyberpunk. Hold Control Shift and press Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. When the window opens up, simply head across to the Performance tab at the very top and then click Memory. This is how much RAM is installed in our computer in the top right and how much is available down here. Basically, you want to give the game about half of your RAM or at least most of the available RAM while you're running all of the programs that you're going to be running while you're playing the game. So if you're going to be browsing the internet, have Discord open, etc., have all of those programs open and see how much RAM is left in the available section. If you have more than 2 gigabytes or 4 gigabytes available, then congratulations, you have more than the pool that the game can use RAM from. In other words, we can allow the game to use more RAM. So just so you know, you need RAM for your PC to run smoothly, including the game. You need to have some headroom on top of the game and Windows just to make sure everything runs smoothly overall. So what you should be looking for is using quite a lot of your RAM, but not everything. So with all of the programs I'm going to be using while playing the game, OBS, Discord, etc. open, this is how much RAM I have left. 33 gigs out of 64. So instead of using all of the available RAM, I'll round it off to a nice number like 32. Of course, if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM and you're only using 4 of it, then you can give the game 4 or 3 if you'd like to keep some for other programs. 16 gigs and you're only using say 6, you can give the game 10 or 9. Once you find out what number you want to give the game, head back to the config and over here, highlight 1536 or whatever you have written here next to pool CPU and simply type how much you want to give the game. I'll give it say 32 GB in capitals as such. This gives the game a pool of 32 gigabytes of RAM that it can pull from. Once again, make sure that you have this in the available section that the game can actually pull from when it wants it. If this exceeds what you have available, the game will likely crash and take Windows with it. Then if you'd like, you can hit space right after this number just to make the organization nice. Then we have pool GPU. How much VRAM do you have available on your graphics card and how much do you want the game using? For this, there's no real complicated equations or anything we need to go through. Simply hit Control Shift Escape once again, scroll down until you find your graphics card and then click on it. What we're looking for is down at the bottom here, dedicated GPU memory. You can see exactly how much is used currently by OBS, videos and other games on your PC and you see how much you have left. While you can say, right, I have 11 gigs, I'm using 1.2, I can give the game 9.8 and then inside of the pool GPU, you can enter say 9 gigabytes to give it 9 gigabytes of VRAM. But for this, it's pretty much safe to just enter the full amount of VRAM you have and it'll pull from whatever's left there. This isn't as much of an issue as pool CPU. Cool. Hit Ctrl S to save the file and you can close out of your text editor. 
Note that we do have a backup if we'd like to go back to the default settings at any time. From here, people on the Reddit post that sparked all of this information with 22.5 thousand upvotes at the time of recording and a ton of rewards all say that you need to be running the game in administrator mode. So to force the game to run in admin mode by default, simply head back to folders to Cyberpunk 2077, open up the bin x64, locate Cyberpunk, right-click, properties, compatibility, and then make sure to check run this program in administrator mode. After hitting OK, anywhere that you launch the game, whether it's through good old games, Steam, a shortcut on your desktop, or anywhere else, it will start as administrator, which is exactly what you want. Head across to Steam, then click play next to the game over here. You'll see that my screen goes black, that was me giving the game administrator privileges on my PC, and now OBS has hooked into it. After the game starts up, I'll simply load into the game in the same place that I benchmark it from. And there we go. Now that we're in the world, you can see Mem1 in the top left corner is 5,200 megabytes. The game is using 5.2 gigabytes of VRAM on my graphics card. If we pause the game, head out into Windows, you can see that Cyberpunk is using 3.17 gigabytes of RAM. Cool. Let's go ahead and close the game. And just for reference, I'll head back into Engine, Config. I'll restore this file to the original by simply deleting it, then renaming our copy, getting rid of the different text as such. Now we're back to where we were, 1.5 gigabytes and 3 gigabytes default. Let's go ahead and launch the game. You can see that I'm using 5.1 gigabytes of VRAM, which is almost exactly the same as what we had before, if I'm not mistaken. I'll only be able to check this in the actual video itself. If I pause, head out to my desktop once again and check the game, it's using 3.1 gigabytes of actual RAM. So what exactly is going on here? Well, closing out of the game, this is where things get a little bit funky. So before we get into hard benchmarks and numbers, why hasn't anything changed? Checking through the post, I wasn't able to find too much information. While this post was created two days ago, the last public update pushed to Steam for Cyberpunk 2077 was four days ago over here. Obviously, you can see the internal testing branch 16 hours ago. That's not important. This one over here is four days ago. So obviously, the developers haven't pushed an update for the game. I think it may just have something to do with my setup. I've followed all the steps exactly as suggested. And this tutorial should help you get places if this is what you're looking for. Just because it hasn't worked for me on either my desktop or my laptop doesn't mean it won't work for you. It's worth a shot if you have extra RAM or VRAM lying around that the game can use. If you paid for it, you may as well use it, or at least try to. Of course, for now, this is just a temporary config fix or rather tweak to hopefully get the game using more of your system, even though it's available. While it's not guaranteed to give you better performance, it should. And from what I've seen, a lot of people are saying that it is giving them performance boosts, or at least it's fixing stuttering and other issues. So now that we've gone through the setup and I've explained exactly what I think is going on, let's go through some hard numbers. This is obviously going to be rather quick. So on the screen now, you'll see a couple of benchmarks. The first couple will be from my desktop PC with an NVIDIA 1080 Ti and an AMD Ryzen 3900X at 4.14 gigahertz with 64 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz RAM. The first couple of tests were run at 1440p on high. The only thing I changed was motion blur and a couple of those options that I really dislike. Either way, running at fully stock default settings, I got an average of 31.8 FPS and a minimum of 25.5, with a maximum of 38. Then, when I told the game to use 32 gigabytes of RAM and 11 gigabytes of VRAM with the exact same settings, I ended up with 32.2 FPS and 26.4 minimum FPS, 39.9 maximum FPS. And because so many people on the thread were saying run it as an administrator, I told it to run as admin and running it at high 1440p with 32 gigs and 11 gigs respectively, it had an average FPS of 33.1, 26.1 minimum FPS, 74 maximum FPS. And of course, that's a bit of an outlier. I think something popped up onto my screen saying a crime was noticed or something like that. So take that maximum with a grain of salt. Other than that, we only really gained 4% performance in total. That could still be within margin of error, depending on what was going on at the background of my PC at the time of playing it. But for you, of course, you may notice a much bigger, more meaningful difference. For me, there wasn't too much movement on this graph to really justify anything. Then I thought, maybe it's because it's GPU limited. Let me set everything down to low graphics options. I did exactly that. And at 2K, 1440p once again, I had an average of 50.4, minimum of 34, maximum of 62.2. Then I told it to use way more of my resources instead of just what was the default, so 32 and 11 gigs. It ran at 51 average, 34.5 minimum, 63.6 maximum. Once again, basically no change. 
Then again, I thought, maybe I'm stressing my GPU too much. Let me drop it down to low and 1080p. What exactly happened? Well, the exact same thing. Default settings, 50.7 FPS, 32 low, 75 maximum. Then allowing it to use 32 gigs of RAM, 11 gigs of VRAM, 51.5 average, 30.3 minimum, 75.9 maximum once again. Right, so maybe it's an AMD thing. I tried it on my laptop with a much more underpowered GPU and an okay processor. Running at low, 1600 by 900, I averaged 26.4 FPS average, 15 minimum and 34 maximum. That was of course at complete stock default settings. When I told it to use 16 of my 24 available gigs of RAM and the full 4 gigs available on my 1050, it had an average of 26.2, minimum of 17 and maximum of 34. Running it as admin, 26.6 average, 20.7 minimum, 34.3 maximum. And then on top of that, I was reading through a bit further on the Reddit post where they said instead of defining exactly how much RAM it can take or whatever, simply just set the numbers to zero and it'll sort of guess its way around and use whatever you have available. Doing that resulted in 26.6 FPS average, minimum, and 34 maximum. Once again, absolutely no change to the average FPS, even more so here where my PC is much more limited and much more in need of using more of the available RAM and possibly VRAM. While the game used 5 or so gigabytes of VRAM on my desktop PC and my laptop only had about 4 gigabytes to go around, if you're thinking it may be a huge constraint on graphics VRAM, then why on my desktop where it had another 4 gigs or so to go, it didn't use them. Well, simply put, I don't exactly think that this method has no legs, it may really well work for you as it has worked for a lot of people. Once again, just because it hasn't worked for me on my exact setup, it's very much worth a try for you. Obviously, you won't lose anything from trying this, you only have something to gain from trying this. And of course, if you do lose something, you can simply just restore to the backup and you're back to where you started. If you do do this, make sure to leave a comment down below as I'm incredibly curious to see exactly what happened on your computer and how yours reacted to it. If you're able to provide numbers, please do try and do so. So obviously, looking at these results over here, which will be linked in the description down below, you can see all of the numbers here, and of course the graphs once again. It's rather sad that these didn't go exactly as expected. I would have loved to have an extra 20 or so FPS, but who knows, maybe you will. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found something useful in it. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.